I find the concepts of astrophobia and thalassophobia deeply disturbing. Both astrophobia and thalassophobia are examples of a combination of fear of the unknown and a fear of giant things. Both have gathered somewhat of a cult following on the internet. Lots of videos, stories, games, and all sorts of other media play off the reputation of such strong fears. I want to tell you about a game. It's not a hard game. It's not much of a game at all. It has basic mechanics, and it finishes in an hour or two. But a game that nonetheless kept me absolutely glued to it, and in a state of pure dread every second. This is what greeted me when I launched Iron Lung. I bought Iron Lung for five dollars. I expected, well, not much. I'd heard about it in the past and figured it would be fun to play. Downloaded near immediately, and when I launched it, ugh. When you press new game, there are a few short paragraphs. They help explain the setting, but end up asking more questions than the answer. Decades ago, every known star and habitable planet vanished leaving only those who were on space stations or starships. This event became known as the Quiet Rapture. With supplies dwindling and infrastructure crumbling, survivors are searching for any trace of natural resources in a universe of barren moons, lit by the ghost light of vanished stars. One such moon holds a strange anomaly, an ocean of blood. You are a convict, tasked with exploring this anomaly, in a makeshift submarine nicknamed the Iron Lung. It was not designed for this depth, so you will be welded inside, and the forward window will be closed. There was no time for training. If successful, you earn your freedom. The game starts with a cutscene, where you cannot move at all. All you can do is slowly watch the depth go farther down, and the operator's voice fade farther and farther away. Eventually, the radio operator is cut off in the middle of saying, Good luck. Here is the game. This is the space you will inhabit for the rest of your entire time playing Iron Lung. Two angle arrows, forward and back, coordinates for both. A bolted on porthole, a fire extinguisher, a camera, a terminal, and a note. This is not an expedition, it is an execution. When they put you in here, they don't want you to return. And even if you do, and even if they keep their promises, what freedom waits for you? A few dying ships in a sea of dead stars? If there is still hope, it lies beyond the veil. Hope in this void is as illusionary as the starlight. I will choose to breathe my last breath at the bottom of an ocean, unseen, unheard, and uncontrolled. They will get their execution. I will get my freedom. Sifting around further in the console, you can figure out more of why you're here and what it means. There have been previous subs. This is the SM-13, and there's evidence of an SM-8. You were likely captured in a battle with another federation of space stations. To make something of a convict, they put you here. Maybe some hope lies under this little rock. Back to the mission. Now you go about tediously navigating the waters, sorry, blood, and photographing several points of interest that the Consolidation of Iron wants pictures of. The first is a set of strange bones, spires, or monoliths. The second, a strange bone-like structure, maybe a shrine or a rib cage. The third are these disturbing tube shapes. The fourth, more bones, and the fifth, a large skeleton of an undersea creature. The sixth is a strangely civilized structure. It has windows, maybe. Columns? Pillars? Doesn't matter. It's more important that you move on and go find the next point of interest. On your way out of the lagoon that this structure is in, that bump teleported you from here to here. Hey, that's fine. It just means you're closer to the next point of interest. On the way there, something big passes by. Something close enough to set off the proximity sensors. Creature, maybe? Doesn't matter. The next point is another disturbing bony configuration. 
You go on to pass through a very small strait, and the walls have pillars on them. Oxygen notification. By now, the oxygen is getting lower, and ugh! The claustrophobia really starts to get you, but you keep pressing forward. Just three to go. An extremely small trench is in your way, as your precise X, Y, and A skills are going to be needed. As you get closer, the sub begins to shake and contort, and you photograph this distorted thing. On the way out, something else bumps into you, and now the sub is much farther away. The second to last point is here, pretty close now, and it's some more bones. Great. Okay. Final one. Wait. What the f is that? Ah! I'm finishing this game. I don't care about my second person narration or, or anything. I'm getting to this last point. Oh god. Late into the game, you feel the stress mounting. You're running out of air fast, and running out of pressure faster. Blood begins to pool at your feet. It nearly engulfs the console, as you try as hard as possible to reach that final point. Maybe the game will end. Maybe you'll survive. However unlikely, maybe there's a chance they'll pull you out of here. As you dial in the coordinates, and turn the right angle, and go to take the picture, It was all meaningless. That little glimpse of hope was nothing. The sub was scattered to pieces at the bottom of the trench. Nothing was recovered. The whole mission created more questions than answers. Turns out, it was just an execution. The end of the ending text reads, The stars shine pale as bones. The moon is a lifeless corpse. Its ocean, a gaping wound. The universe what's left of it, is dying. But somewhere in the void, there must be hope. But is there? Look what happened to the SM-13. Maybe. There is hope. We'll never be brave enough to accept it. Iron Lung is a great game. It's not large, it makes no pretense of being complex. It is surprisingly simple. And this is for a reason. The monotonous gameplay requires constant focus. And that constant focus can then be brutally interrupted by creaks, creatures, and the mounting pressure on the little vessel. As I'm recording this, I only have 2.7 hours on the game, and I've played it three times. I love this game, because it horrified me. Not the kind of fear that makes you afraid of the dark, afraid of what might be behind you, or just out of sight. The kind of fear that festers inside of you, and makes you eerily aware of your own insignificance. I was glued to my screen every second, waiting for another noise, waiting for another monster to wade past, and hoping dearly that I can make it to the next point of interest. And then, at the end of it all, just when the game has my full attention, every nerve in my body glued to its presence, BAM! Slaps me in the face. Thank you, David Shemansky. Over the course of making this video, I emailed David Shemansky. I said I fanboyed for a second, and then asked if there was anything he'd want me to put in the video. And he said, Markiplier mode is coming? And this is a reference to how Markiplier, yes, that one, is currently working on an Iron Lung movie. So go check that out. It looks pretty cool. And go check out David's other work. It's all What makes Iron Lung scary is not its sounds, its creatures, or its setting. It's a combination of all of them, perfectly mixed together to disturb every human instinct. We evolved to be afraid of the unknown, to be afraid of beasts and dangerous wilderness. But we did not evolve for the deep ocean so deep that you can't ever surface again, or space so vastly lonely it begs for ghost light. The end of all this, this unknown, what is there? There's something about it that attracts us. Is it a need for knowledge, or exploration, 
or fear. I don't know. Maybe to fight the monsters to become it. Maybe Nietzsche was right. If you focus too long on the bad, on the scary, on the large and unexplored, maybe you miss the big picture. I don't know. I'm getting too philosophical. But I do think that whatever you call it, the ocean, space, or the abyss, if you look for too long, you can't look away. Wow, uh, this video was different. I feel way too serious right now. <laughs> this is a new style of uh, video for me. It's not permanent, but don't be surprised if I do more serious type stuff in the future. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to David Shemusky, I hope that's how you say it, and Kyle for the new outro bit. And of course, it's Markiplier time. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Go like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.